So I, I would like to, to introduce first myself. I, I'm Julian. Uh, I, I did a postdoc at uh, PUC University in Brazil, and uh, so I worked with uh, Swellen and with Nathan. And I have been for two months, three months here uh, in the lab <laughs> uh, to work with Denise, and that's why I'm uh, white hair now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yes, and I already uh, mentioned uh, Thomas, which is a PhD student uh, in uh, at the Lossy Lab. Uh, he helped uh, us to to compare a numerical scheme with experimental data. And uh, now I'm working. I'm not working anymore at the PUC or neither the Lama. I'm working at the Lossy, but I'm still coming here. Uh, so now uh, I'm going to talk about. Um, uh, how to accurately predict moisture front. Um, so I, I will not uh, mm. talk a lot of the context, but uh, uh, we are uh, focusing on building physics and particularly heat and moisture transfer in porous materials. And uh, we use, uh, as Swellen said, uh, we use numerical models to realize predictions. So we, we try to evaluate energy consumption uh, to new buildings or retrofit buildings. Uh, we try to avoid the moisture risks, uh, risks uh, like more growth, more dissure, uh, and so on. But um, before using these models uh, to predict the phenomenon, we have to uh, compare them uh, with experimental data and uh, to make sure that we are representing well the, the phenomenon. So, in literature, we have a, a lot of students doing this kind of stuff. Um, uh, particularly, they, they do what we call the adsorption uh, desorption cycle. So they take a materials and they uh, solicitate uh, the materials with a uh, with a step, like like it is shown here, and uh, uh, they observe what uh, what is happening in the material. Uh, usually, they are looking the moisture content, the mass of the materials in terms of water. So it increases like that for the, according to the step, and then they decrease, and they, they observe this uh, decrease in the in the field. So um, this kind of test was done for a lot of, a lot of materials, uh, different ones, uh, at different scales. When I say materials, they, they just take a material, or they they also did some experimental studies for a whole world, where wall, excuse me, wall, and uh, they did it in different laboratories. And uh, each time that they have their experimental uh, data, they want to compare it with a numerical model, they use a diffusion equation, diffusion model, and they just model the diffusion transfer uh, inside the material. Even non-linear, but they just only consider the, the diffusion mechanism. Yeah. Oui. Just a question about the, um, the stress you put on your material. So it's about the boundary condition you said? Yes. The step function is uh, for the boundary condition. Yes. So you have a material, okay? Like, and it's like identical <coughs> on both, on every side. They they make a geopatic on all the sides except the, the top one. Oh, okay. okay. And they make a step in relative humidity, and they uh, mm -hmm. they measure the the weight of the the, the material, so they can uh, uh, deduce the increase in terms of uh, mass water inside the material. So basically that. And after that, they try to uh, to model the diffusion inside the materials with a model. And in all these studies, um, we can uh, when they compare the, the results of the numerical model with uh, with uh, experimental data, they always observe this kind of dis discrepancies. And uh, there is always for the numerical model a slower behavior. Uh, comparing to the experimental data. So we, we wonder why uh, we have this kind of behavior. behavior. And uh, some people try to, uh, to adjust this, uh, this behavior by considering uh, what we call hysteresis in the, in the material. Uh, they talk about uh, a lot of physics uh, that I don't even understand, uh, about the equilibrium uh, of the material properties. They try to consider other, other effects on the materials pro properties and so on, but never, uh, no one studies the moisture convection. 
which is uh, th this equation. So we have a velocity here, uh, which is called a, that multiplies the, 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 the first derivative of the, of the field. So the objective of our work uh, was to propose a, a robust uh, numerical scheme to compute the solution of this kind of uh, equation and uh, to show the impact of this, uh, considering these terms, uh, when we compare uh, the, the results uh, the experiment to the experimental data. Um, so first, uh, I will explain the, the numerical schemes that we used, uh, so for the so-called advection diffusion equation. So I wrote, I wrote it like that, and I just consider, for instance, a linear coefficient, for, just for the sake of uh, simplicity. And uh, so we can discretize this equation by uh, this kind of, uh, of approach uh, using an um, implicit, explicit approach. And we have the flux uh, J uh, here at um, the half, uh, half boundary between uh, XG and uh, XG plus 1. Uh, so we can use two kind of uh, scheme, uh, the Planck Nicholson one or the Scharfetter Bumel uh, to to solve the, to express these terms. So I will detail it. Uh, so the Planck Nicholson approach um, it uh, tried to express the flux at the half of the of the um, the cell. So here at the half between g and x plus one. Uh, it, uh, it uses the, the values of ug and uh, ug minus 1, minus 1, no, <laughs> more 1, plus 1. And uh, uh, so if we just consider the diffusive term, it will be approximated like that, for instance. And uh, the adjective term, like this, depends on the sign of a. And the strength of this, uh, of this scheme is, uh, as we mentioned before, it's uh, unconditionally stable. So we can study another scheme that is uh, Scharfett and Gumel, uh, and it's assume that the, the flux J is constant, constant on the dual cell. So we assume that it is constant on this side, on this cell, and uh, we have the following boundary value problem, which is the flux here. It's a solution of this equation, and what we can uh, see in this boundary boundary value problem is that we have two boundary condition, okay, we know these terms, and we want to, to, to focus this. So, two boundary, a BVP with two boundary conditions, and actually two unknowns. What are the unknown? It's the flux J on this, on this cell, and U. So we have an, an analytical expression of the, of the flux, uh, that can be, uh, uh, that is computed like that. Um, what is interesting of this expression is that we, uh, we can uh, correctly re reproduce the steady state and uh, it is what we call the, uh, asymptotic preserving, so we can switch easily between uh, both uh, uh, diffusion and advection equation. If we have uh, A, so the advection tending to zero, zero we, have, we, we can uh, see that we, we get the so classical discretization of, uh, of the um, diffusion equation. If we have the diffusion process, diffusion value tending to zero, zero, we, we, we can find the classical discretization of the advection uh, terms. Um, the second, uh, the second uh, strength of this, this game is that we have an exact, due to the BVP that we saw, we have a, an exact interpolation of U on the interval. So it's this expression, but we don't have to make any interpolation. The only hypothesis is that uh, the flux is constant on the dual cell. Um, and at the end, when I compute, uh, uh, when I have uh, introduced uh, the expression of the flux J uh, inside my discretized equation, I get uh, a scheme that look at that, that is as a part implicit and explicit one, uh, depending on the parameters of the problem. So we, we did some numerical investigation using uh, these two schemes. Uh, so here you have, uh, uh, oh, sorry, uh, it's missing here the advection, uh, advection term. So you have a, a convection equation, the boundary condition uh, according to Robin type, 
the expression of uh, the, the properties of the materials and the boundary condition uh, which are uh, evolving uh, according to sinus and uh, so we, we, we did this investigation using uh, the, the classical quantum boson, the modified one uh, that was mentioned before and the charfette gumel one uh, so just to re recall that uh, Kronk-Nicholson, the mod modified version of the Kronk-Nicholson is that instead of having, uh, having this kind of uh, system uh, with uh, the, the, the matrix A depending on, on the properties of the material that depends on the, uh, the time layer after, we, we replace this kind of, uh, of uh, matrix. So uh, when we look at the results, uh, we have uh, uh, we also compared the, the results of the numerical schemes with the Chapman uh, um, uh, uh, solution, a solution computed using the Chapman package. Uh, so we, we have a good representation of the physical phenomena. Uh, we can see here the, the evolution of the vapor pressure in the inside the materials. Um, we, uh, when we compute the, re the error um, according to time or, or space uh, with the reference solution, we have also, um, we can see that the, the SG scheme is more precise than the Frank Nicholson uh, for this case. And uh, we also did a, a convergence uh, study. So on the left side, we fixed the, the space discretization, the dx. And uh, we just uh, we we vary the delta t. So we can see that uh, uh, both scheme, enfin, the Clark Nicholson is uh, order one, first order accurate in time. Uh, we can see on this line, this this graph that the SG scheme has a CFL condition, so it uh, it can uh, it have a stability condition to respect, uh, but it's more accurate than uh, the Clark Nicholson scheme. And on the, the right side, uh, we did the contrary. So we, we fixed delta t and we vary uh, delta x. Uh, so we can see that uh, we have some kind of uh, second order for the SG scheme until the CFL condition is respected. Here we, we start to diverse. And uh, what is interesting is that the uh, accuracy of the, of the scheme, uh, SG scheme, is better when we have a big delta x. We can see that for this kind of uh, delta x, we have a good accuracy of the scheme. Um, so I mentioned about the CFL condition, and uh, uh, it was recently uh, studied, actually in 2015. Uh, so the CFL condition is uh, for the SG scheme is that kind. So it depends on the hyperbolic tangent of delta x. Uh, so we can see that if delta x is small, uh, we we can we have some kind of CFL condition, classical CFL condition, which is a, a second order in the, in delta x. Uh, so this is not so interesting, uh, but the the main point is that uh, when delta x is big, uh, we can have a, a, a CFL condition that is a stability condition that is of, of the order of delta x. So we can say that uh, SG scheme is interesting when we will have a large, large discretization and knowing that uh, the, the scheme is accurate. Um, so we, we also did uh, uh, an investigation of the computational cost. Uh, so on the left side we, we fixed delta x and we just vary the, the time discretization. Uh, so we can see we compare it as I mentioned so to uh, a fully implicit Kronk Nicholson. So we we can see that uh, the fully implicit uh, Kronk Nicholson has to is uh, almost two times uh, <coughs> slower than the SG scheme and the modified Kronk Nicholson due to the sub iterations to treat the non nonlinearities. We can also see that uh, we we still have the CFL and uh, here, but uh, for this kind of discretization. Uh, the modified printing also in the, in the SG scheme have the same order of uh, computational time. And on the right side, we, we did another uh, study. So we, we fixed delta t and we, we varied delta x. Uh, so we can still see that the SG scheme and the Kronk also have the same uh, uh, order of computational, computational time. 
uh, we, we did another investigation using an adaptive time step uh, algorithm, uh, which is a ODO 4 5 in uh, MATLAB. And uh, we can see that uh, for big delta x, where, where the SG scheme is accurate, we can gain a lot of computational time here, getting an accurate solution and really fast. So um, just to, to, rem to insist on the fact that the SG scheme will be uh, accurate for big delta x and, uh, and uh, fast. Uh, so I mentioned in my introduction that we, we want uh, the, the, the scheme, uh, we want to compare our model with the experimental data. So uh, we took some uh, experimental data from the literature that are um, uh, represented here in this graph. So you can see, uh, Jimmy, that you have the relative humidity here. So they do a step and they monitor the relative humidity inside the material. Uh, so you can see what I illustrated in the introduction. Here are the, are the experimental data and here are the results of the models published in the literature uh, the diffusion, using only the diffusion mechanism. So when we use advection uh, transfer, uh, here I reproduce uh, the, the results of the model with just the diffusion mechanism. And you can see in green, blue here, uh, that we, we, when we consider the advection transfer, we can fit very well to the, um, to the experimental data. Uh, so, the difference between two, two, the two graphs is only the place inside the material, the position inside the, the material. Uh, you can s wonder why we, we cannot uh, fit uh, more precisely with the experimental data, the, the measure. It's because uh, here we just focused on the, on the, um, we just focused on the moisture transfer and actually we have coupled uh, transfer considering heat and moisture transfer. So we didn't consider yet. Um, but we did some investigation trying to uh, fit the advection term uh, with the variation of the temperature. So to conclude, um, we presented you uh, the SG uh, scharfetter gumel uh, numerical scheme. So we can say that it has a, a, a better accuracy and that the stability condition is interesting when we have large delta X, large spatial discretization. And uh, we can uh, reach a really low uh, computational term, particularly with we, when we use an adaptive time step. And uh, so for the crank Nicholson one, uh, as well, a strength of, uh, of this scheme is that it is unconditionally stable. stable. Um, but uh, as it was mentioned, we have to be careful with the choice of the time discretization. If, if we want to accurately represent the, the physical phenomenon, we, we cannot have big, uh, big time step. Uh, it has to be chosen in function, as a function of the characteristic uh, time uh, scale of the, of the problem. And uh, we just uh, proposed propose a modified version to avoid the civilization to treat the non -nearities. So as I, I mentioned, when we, we, we compared it with the experimental data, we, we, we succeed in, uh, in uh, reducing the discrepancies, but we have to uh, go on further to, to consider the co coupled effect with temperature and air velocity inside the materials that was not modeled in our study. Well, well, thank you. <laughs> Speak about the, the coupling with uh, air temperature. And, uh, do you mean that the, the parameter A, the condition term, uh, might be another constant? Or yes. Um, here. Yes. Um, a few or a, a actually depends on uh, uh, the temperature and uh, the velocity inside the material. <laughs> Perhaps it depends on, on, on you. Excuse me. It depends on you. Um, no, in the physical expression, it depends only on the velocity and the temperature. Yeah. Because it's uh, it's uh, yeah. Why? 
it's uh, advection of, of the moisture due to the, the transport of temperature <coughs> and, uh, and uh, due to the transport of the air inside the, the material. So the, the advection terms really mean something in terms of physics? In this case, it seems to. No, I mean, you can, you can build a model that fits the data, and, and, and the model is what it is, but you can also wonder if what you put in the model really means something in terms of yeah. physics. Uh, to my point of view, uh, all these studies that was uh, sorry for the quality, but uh, all these studies that was performed in the literature, they consider this kind of materials. And to my point of view, this kind of materials are really uh, what we call hygroscopic. Uh, um, they are really uh, they have a air permeability, a big one, big parameter. Right. So, uh, to my point of view, the advection effect have to be considered to this uh, to this kind of materials. So, uh, so the addiction is the, um, the, the the air flux yes. in the material. Yes. So it, it, yeah, it, it really means something. Yes. It's just uh, just uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, what I should have uh, drawn is that the materials inside um, they are porous. Uh, yes. so, so this is a, 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 a volume of my material, and they have some holes, and so in that hole, the air there are some air leakage, and also some some water movement, water transfer, water diffusion. Mm -hmm. So um, for this kind of materials, the, this uh, hole are big. So I think that for this kind of materials, they, okay. we have some, to have this kind of uh, addiction. Right. So we, we did also a sensitivity study of uh, the value of A, but we didn't do it for different kinds of materials, because it's a parameter difficult to, to measure. Yeah, but, and, and so the thing is, um, there are already some uh, numerical uh, study when they couple temperature and uh, moisture without any addiction. Yes. And so they cannot explain mm -hmm. the the curve only with the the, the coupling curves. No. Okay. So you really need something else. Yes. In this uh, in this studies, they they consider. I just explain explain it for moisture, but they consider both the coupling the coupled effect, temperature and moisture. Okay. And for the, um, when you add coupling, you expect the curve to um, increase uh, faster at the beginning. Uh, but essentially, it's what is missing in, uh, in your. Uh, at the end? Uh, not at the end, at the beginning. <laughs> this one? At the beginning, it seems that. Yeah, you're not reaching. Yeah. Fatigue. Fatigue. You can't have to do it. Have you tried yeah, the, 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 the transient at, on, on the uh, left here? And yeah, maybe yes. Yeah, maybe. Did, did, did you check the um, without advection when you add coupling? The curve. Uh, in we didn't do the ah uh, no. No, even even without advection. No, I didn't do it. No. No. We are working on that. No. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> you accept coupling to uh, you. You, sh you should get advantage of the, the coupling. Yeah, sure. In terms of propagation. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Have you tried a uh, higher order method in, uh, in time or space? Yes, I don't know. No, no, without adaptive. You? Mm, no, so so fast, so no. Because maybe. Yeah. Adaptive time steps. Cat cinq. So it's uh, yes, we did. <laughs> in time, but not, but not in space. Not no. in space. Only war. First order in space. Yes. Okay. But we are beginning. <laughs> And so about the, um, 
the propagation of the, the fronts and the, the material. Um, do you have any idea what uh, happened in, the, in two dimensions? Or in, no. You don't have any... We are not at this point. <laughs> oh yeah. There is no numerical simulation. With affection? Oh, even without the I see. Oh, yes, there are some 2G, but... Uh... Okay, and, and the, the shape of the front, is that... Is, is it a planner moving in the, at the same speed everywhere, or uh, is there any... Curve okay. Now I understand what you say. Uh, no, there, there are no, to my, to my knowledge, there are no 2D model that was performed on this experimental studio. <coughs> they, they assume uh, that uh, the transfer is just in one, one dimension. Because here it's, uh, they try to do some algebraic conditions, so they, they assume that it's just one dimension. Because in two dimensions you expect to have different speed depending on where you are. About the yes, well, you're far away from the line. Merci encore.